Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutun. Welcome to Consider This, the show where we want you to uh, consider what you know of the news of the day. Now, let's begin the show with some good news. At the daily briefing today, Health Ministry Director General Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah reported that Malaysia recorded 85 new COVID-19 cases today. Now, it's worth noting that this is the first time in a month that the daily cases have been below 100. Also announced today was the cancellation of the UPSR and PT3 exams. SPM and STPM exams, however, will be postponed to the first quarter of 2021. And for parents who may be concerned about schools reopening, the Education Ministry has said it will announce two weeks in advance any decision to reopen schools. But whatever that it will be, schools uh, schooling will very likely be different from what it was before. Wouldn't it be, Sharad? Well, you know, and I think the, the minister was trying to point out these realities. Mm. And in his uh, address, he does, in fact, uh, note that there are a lot of uncertainties still out there uh, and along the way. But uh, what uh, the government seems to be uh, well aware of is that they're going to be trying to enable a return to some sort of normality. Now, the postponement of exams, the uh, cancellation of exams this year, and as you mentioned earlier, Melissa, I think first will come with some relief to not just the uh, children who maybe don't want to take those exams, <laughs> uh, but of course their parents and as well as, uh, you know, teachers and teachers and, and the schools themselves mm. who would have otherwise had to prepare for these um, That's right. uh, exams. Exactly right. Now, in other news, Defence Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakub said 13 prison academies nationwide will be used as detention centres for violators of the MCO. If you recall yesterday, Ismail Sabri announced that police will no longer be issuing compounds and instead revert to court sentencing. MCO violators were previously jailed, but the prison's department had complained that this had led to overcrowding and could create new COVID-19 outbreaks. So I truly wonder if this, um, this new solution to gazette these prison academies as detention centres will lead to the same problem of, you know, of um, not being able to observe social distancing. Melissa, you know, it does seem like the government is in a bind, right? Mm. I mean, uh, the, the idea of the MCO buying time for government to set up the medical services, not be overwhelmed by a spike in infection rates, um, but also, you know, uh, just to get everybody new, used to new ways of dealing with uh, social life until a vaccine is found. Right. Now, all that, the spirit of the MCO was in, in that, I think, uh, space. The punishment thing... You know, as a form of deterrence, I, I get it, but, uh, you know, I think people will be concerned. Is whether... it a deterrent, though, Sharad? I don't know. You know, I mean, the, the police had admitted a thousand ringgit fine, a thousand ringgit compound. Uh, they said was they didn't see that as a deterrent. I wonder whether this would be um, considered a deterrent. Perhaps we're missing the point. Perhaps the idea is to, uh, to honour the spirit of the MCO and find out why people are flouting the MCO. Is it ignorance? Is it? Um, irresponsibility or is it poverty is it uh, essential you know trips that you have to do not everyone is out there just because they're bored yeah and of course we're also finding the news as we did when you know there was lockdown in Wuhan some people fall through the net and mm. you know some really tragic cases we had that story of that old man who yes. had been starving until police officers found him and he's since uh, found dead as well and so really tragic cases so the, the system is not perfect and it was put together uh, you know in, in order to respond to a, a dire need. Right. So I think on one hand, uh, there might be a lot of us who are sympathetic with the government, uh, the immense pressure on government to deliver. What is the measure of the MCO success? It's not compliance with the MCO, right. it is in fact in the changing nature of the infection rates and so on the and so forth. The flattening of the, the curve. The flattening of the exactly curve. I mean, right. That really would be the, the objective. Yes, right? so, okay. I, I agree. And, and Melissa, you point to a very important thing. The devil is in the detail when it comes to this shift uh, from fines to uh, imprisonment. Mm. Will these new centres in fact create 
same the same problems that uh, ordinary or regular prisons would have uh, yeah. uh, been and for uh, for those trying to put this together. In fact, we had a conversation with lawyer Sharizan Johan last week, and he suggested uh, rather than you know, he suggested delaying sentencing for one thing, but rather than imprisonment, uh, to perhaps give community service because the spirit of the MCO is about if you if you can contravene the MCO, you are doing a disservice to the community, and perhaps the fine or the punishment should be more service to the community done at a later date. Some have things you, to consider. <laughs> and also, you know, Marissa, we don't know when the MCO is going to end and are exactly. the sentences going to run beyond the MCO period? And what about the fact that because many of the people who are out there presumably are heads of homes yes. or households, are they going to be all in prison? Oh, I mean, no. and what is going to be the consequence of imprisoning mm. the head of the household uh, during this period? Uh, it's, it is quite uh, bewildering to think that this is going to be an uh, adequate solution. That's right. Okay, well now let's very quickly take a look at non-COVID news. My Events International founder, Shahrul Hamid Dawood, has reportedly been appointed the new CEO of HRDF, or the Human Resource Development Fund. Now, according to Malaysia Kini, his appointment will, be, have, will first have to be announced officially by the new HRDF board. However, uh, Penang Deputy Chief Minister P. Ramasamy has already responded to this speculation objecting to the choice of the candidate for the job. Now, the rumoured appointment has also been criticised by others and the main objection to Sharul was due to him being the principal organiser of a series of events in 2016 that featured Sakir Naik. Yes, and you know, equally fascinating, uh, in, in, not just the criticisms, Melissa, but also those who have, uh, the minister who's come out to defend the, the, his mm. appointment, talking about the fact that the, the man in question, his grandfather was a founder member of MIC. And it's fascinating when politicians think out loud, what they're actually thinking is, you know, is a source of, of I think, a, a lot of analysis. Now, one of the things it seems to be like his political gene genealogy seems to uh, trump any question about his professionalism. I, I'm not quite sure why the minister thought that this would be the winning argument. <laughs> That's up to the minister to respond then. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. After this, how higher education must change to adapt to the current pandemic and also the anticipated recession. Stay tuned.